Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Ever since I started streaming, a question that comes up almost every day is Hey Chaos, I have these combat levels, what bosses should I try to get started on PVMing? And most of the time, I'm way too focused on what I'm doing to give a concrete answer, so I thought, why not make a video on 10 bosses you can start from beginner to intermediate in order for your PVM journey to begin. And then, I can just point people to this video. And speaking of, I stream 5 times a week on this channel starting at around the 9am CST if you want to come hang out with us. So this video will work like this. We will talk about 10 bosses with incremental difficulty for you to start getting enough confidence for higher level activities. The first category will include 5 bosses to teach the very basics, and the second one contains 5 more monsters that can still be considered easy for an experienced player, but because we are just starting out, they should be a good goal for you to beat in order to build up the confidence and skill needed for more difficult raids and solo encounters. If you don't like and subscribe in 3 seconds, your RNG will be bad for the rest of the year. 3, 2, 1, thank you, enjoy the video. For each boss, I will also show what items I recommend on screen. As for levels, I recommend between 50s and 70s on all your combats to start grinding the first category, of course going up in difficulty with each one. And for the second one, I would say a minimum of 75 is needed for you to use higher tier weapons when you can afford them. Other than this, we are ready to learn how to gradually get into PVMing and bossing in the old school RuneScape. The first boss, or better said, the two bosses, but they're quite literally the same, only in different places, are the Deranged Archaeologist and the Crazy Archaeologist, found in Fossil Island and the Wilderness, respectively. Now, some people might make fun of me for even suggesting starting here, but these two are going to teach you something that's pretty crucial for anything that you do in PVMing and also RuneScape, and that is movement. Whenever they do their special attack with uh, Taste My Knowledge, Rain, whatever they say for their special attack, you simply need to walk away from the attack to avoid the tons of damage. Now, these don't really kill you in one hit, I mean, even if you have low HP, I'm pretty sure you can survive, um, but moving away from them is just gonna teach you about movement, and that is the very beginning of your PVM journey, when to move away from bosses, especially when they do a deadly attack. Now, keep in mind that this is just only going to be needed or done for maybe some easy or medium combat achievements, because because they, they, they are really not going to teach you too much, and the movement you get from them, you're really going to get them in just a couple of KC. The next one is one of my favorites, and it is my number one way to get elite clue scrolls, and they are the Barrows Brothers. Now, this one is weird in a way that if you fight each of the brothers individually, of course, like you do in the activity, they are not going to teach you a lot because all you need to do is pray and attack. But whenever you put all of them together, you need to move, you need to pray uh, accordingly, you need to switch your gear, and of course, my favorite part about this activity is opening the chest at the end of the entire kill, whenever you have your Six Barrows Brothers skill, and that is going to give you the chance at some expensive items, including Arams or even Carols. Now, even if you don't get those, the runes that you get from them, especially if you have the hard Mauritania Diary, are going to be more than enough to get some of your uh, some of your profit back, or even just a little bit, in order for you to get more kills in. Now, this one is specifically important because some of them, <coughs> Derok, have important DPS checks, I guess, so you might potentially either want to get the kill over with quickly, or you want to keep your melee prayer up at all times. And this is coming from someone who has sadly died to a Derok bomb, even as a maxed player. Now, on the opposite end of my ways to get elite clue scrolls, Sarachnus is definitely one of my least favorites, because it's just way too annoying, and I think it has too much HP for what it actually does. But Sarachnus is also going to teach you about movement, and whenever you are killing it with melee, so you're next to the spider itself, it's going to do an attack that will snare you, and it's going to walk away from you. So you need to pray accordingly, and then whenever it walks away, you will need to pray ranged in order to get close to it again, pray melee, and of course, when the little spiders come up, you have to kill it quickly, otherwise they are going to kind of, maybe not tear through you if you have enough uh, defensive stats, but they are going to be definitely annoying and gonna eat through your supplies if you are not fast enough. I would definitely recommend getting a little bit higher levels for this one, because if you're doing this in a mid-level account, this can be quite painful. However, everything you'll learn from Sarachnus is going to be pretty decent for you to start, and this is definitely one of the best ones I recommend for players starting to get into PVMing. Now, this all sounds great so far, but we cannot continue without keeping your online identity safe. And that is where today's sponsor, Aura, has you covered. I'm sure you've seen many services that offer online protection via something called a VPN which keeps your online information safe from people trying to spy on you. 
Well, Aura goes a step further, and not only does it match the VPN feature as well as real-time production for all your devices. It also has tons of tools that will keep your online identity safe. One of my favorite tools is getting notified when your login credentials have been found online because of a leak in data from websites you may not even remember at this point. Also, since a phone number is needed to use their service, it will let you know if you are part of some shady company list that loves to send out spam calls. And it will actually opt you out of set list for your call history to stay cleaner. You may also link your bank account for Aura to keep track of your credit score for you, and even stay vigilant on any financial fraud you may encounter online. They offer 24-7 customer support in case you have any questions regarding all of the great tools Aura offers to keep you safe. If anything you've heard so far tickles your fancy, scan the QR code on screen or click the links in the description below at aura.com chaos or the pinned comment of this video to get a free 14-day trial as well as up to 42% off their best package. Thank you very much for your attention, and let's continue. This next one I would consider slightly easier than Seracnus, but because it has higher requirements, I would say, it is a little more annoying and should definitely be considered for you to get a couple more levels in, and we're talking about Commander Zeliana, the Sarah Dome in general. Now, for this one, one of the hardest parts is getting the KC required to enter the room because you have to kill either the spiritual mages or any other monster inside, which is honestly pretty annoying next to the armadillo one. I definitely recommend you get an ecumenical key for this, and once inside, all you need to do is run around the room with either a rune crossbow, dragon crossbow, armadillo crossbow, bofa. If you have a Tebow, I'm pretty sure you don't need this video, but uh, that is exactly uh, what you should aim in order to kill this monster pretty quickly, or even more recently, the Tumican Shadow should also work wonders against Commander Zeliana. The easy part about this is just running around and clicking it every six ticks, or according to the speed of your uh, weapon, and then once you kill it, the quote-unquote difficult part is going to be killing the minions, and you can start practicing prayer flicking once you are, you know, facing all of them together, which is definitely going to let you stay there for a lot longer, because if you have lower defense levels, they can definitely hit you by quite a lot, and your supplies are not going to last that long. This is a pretty good one, because if you get lucky with the drops, you can get either the Cerodome and Hilt or the, Ar the Armadillo Crossbow, which should definitely help out your bank, and you're going to be able to buy tons and tons of upgrades. Last on this category, we have the newly released Calvarion, and in my opinion, this is the best one to practice with, because it's easy to get to, and if you get into a pinch with uh, PKers, you can definitely get out of there quickly with your Royal Seed Pod, since this one is uh, pretty close to level 30, and you don't even need to run away, unless you get entangled for some reason. This one is pretty cool because it's going to teach you a lot about movement, and once you get to half of the HP, like maybe halfway throughout the fight for each of the faces, it is going to summon the dogs, which also gives you, I would say, practice with a mechanic where the monster or a boss can actually summon little, like, things to help it around, and of course you need to get through it, and in order for you to kill this, you don't really need too much. If you don't have some of the wildy bosses, you can easily go in there with a Seractus Cudgel and Abyssal Bludgeon, and it is not really bad if you die to a PKer, because if you have budget gear, you only lose a couple of, um, of GP, and what you get from Calvarion is going to kind of make up for it, as long as you can stay here for a couple of kills. Speaking of PKers, this is also pretty good because it's going to give you the confidence you need in order to, well, go into the wildy, trying it out, and of course it is going to increase your reaction time because if you see a PKer in the room, you either have to get out as soon as possible or just react to it and try to anti-PK them. Up next we have the Dagonoth Kings, and uh, trust me, the hardest part about this is not the bosses themselves, but it's actually getting here. I'm just kidding. So I have the Dagonoth Kings here because the difficult part about this is when you go in there first, you are probably going to need to prayer flick both the Major and the Ranger, so that is going to help you a ton. Once you have prayer flicking down, you will be able to get them pretty quickly, and once you focus on one of them, you can kill the other one, and then you can get the rotation going. Now, this one requires slightly better DPS, so I wouldn't really recommend you come here with like a blowpipe, rune crossbow, a whip or something, because it's really gonna take a long time. You might potentially need slightly better weapons that you're seeing on screen in order for you to kill the Dagonoth Kings quickly enough for them not to respawn once you are still killing one of them. Now, if that happens, that can also give you some practice for your prayer flicks, and this is something that's going to be absolutely crucial later down the road, so I would recommend you don't tank the DKs, start learning about prayer flicking, and once you have the rotation going, these are actually pretty easy. One of my least favorite bosses that I am so thankful that I spooned the pet at 134kc are the Grotesque Guardians. 
Thankfully, I don't have to come here until I decide to green log this. But, um, you know, talking about the collection log aside, this is going to teach you so much more that it's pretty interesting for new players to begin with. And with a 75 Slayer requirement, you can get started with them pretty quickly. They are going to teach you about uh, prayer flicking, gear switches, movement, DPS check, and even if you don't do enough damage for that DPS check, you will need to go grab all of the orbs from the Flying Gargoyle, I think it's called Noon, or is that the pet? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, this one is going to be pretty cool, especially after the second phase, whenever you get launched in the air and then you, you need to move away, you come back to the growth as Guardian, and then like you have to do so much in order to you know keep track of everything. This is definitely one of my least favorite bosses because you need so much attention for not a lot of reward like you're gonna get a couple of gp per hour like it's it's definitely gonna pay for some of your supplies but it's really not worth it for people looking for tons and tons of gp however if you want to start getting better this is definitely one boss that you should try out keep in mind that one kill even if you are wearing like the minimum gear and levels that i recommend is going to take anywhere between three to five minutes it's definitely not great, but it's gonna teach you so much that your future self will thank you for. One of the most difficult mid to even late game bosses I recommend getting used to is Zulra. Now the reason for this is because you are going to need to bring a couple of switches. You can pretty much camp the Bofa if you have one, but if you don't, and if you're camping a blowpipe, then you need a trident, and you're gonna be you're gonna need to be on point with your prayer and your gear switches. Not only that, this is the first boss we've had on this list that will teach you about rotations. And, uh, well, truth be told, I have almost 400 KC and I still need the plugin in order to know what phase is coming. But it's just pretty easy to see what uh, snake is gonna pop up, so you can get ready for that switch. And basically just go to the desired place in order for you to keep doing damage. This one I would recommend that you, well I mean not recommend, but you quite literally absolutely need a Ring of Suffering uh, for you to kill the little snakes, for you not to take so much damage, and even if you do, they are going to die pretty quickly. Keep in mind also that because of the bots, I, yeah, I know that bots are not that prominent anymore, Jagex is kind of working on it, but there are, you know, let's be honest, there are still quite a lot. Um, profit here has definitely decreased by quite a bit, so you're gonna make your money back in, you know, even if you die, your, your, your supplies. You're gonna make some money, but it's not as much as it used to be before. So, yeah, Zulra definitely one that I would recommend, and uh, that's gonna be helpful for your hard candor and diary for that elite void and to do even more damage. My absolute favorite PVM content, especially as of recently, we have the Tombs of a Mascot. Now, you might be wondering, why is this on an entry PVM guide? Well, it's of course because we have an entry mode for you to practice with. After Beneath Cursed Sands, you can come here and you can do a zero invocation run in order to experience every single boss, which is going to teach you so, so much about everything in the entire, I would say, PVM system, and each invocation you add up, it's just going to teach you so much more. You have Baba, where you have the uh, waves of monkeys for you to switch your prayer, switch your gear. Baba herself is just going to, you know, teach you about movement with the boulders. We also have Kefri. Kefri doesn't teach a lot, but Kefri's still, you know, kind of okay. Uh, Aka will help you with your short-term memory, will definitely teach you if you want to do the butterfly method, will teach you about movement. Um, the movement for the for the orb face is insane. And of course, Zebak will teach you a lot about the prayer flicking, because, well, you're definitely going to need to pray for the entire fight. And of course, the Wardens, there's so, so much I could talk about TOA. Uh, I think at this point, everyone knows that this is my favorite piece of uh, PVM activity, and it can make you filthy rich in a matter of minutes. So definitely try this one out, and then turn on invocations a little by little for you to get used to it. And I would say the minimum that you should start doing it is level 50, so you can at least to see a fang in your chest. One piece of content I would definitely say is harder than entry mode TOA, especially for this list, is the normal gauntlet. Now, the corrupted one is a lot more difficult, and it's not only because you need, you know, you have less time to prepare, there's more tornadoes, everything has more health and everything, but the, gaunt the normal gauntlet will teach you so much more in terms of supply management, movement, time management, switches, prayer, eating, uh, uh, looking at where you stand, especially where the tornadoes are. The rooms themselves, especially when you are looking for the demi bosses, are not going to teach you too much. The most important part, or the most difficult part, is definitely you micromanaging everything for you to get all of your supplies ready before the Hunlif. 
I would personally say that getting everything ready and especially uh, as perfectly as possible for you to have the best of chance in the preparation phase is a little more difficult than the Hunliff uh, himself. So once you get into the fight, it's definitely uh, chill at the beginning, but then when the tornado starts spawning and the floor keeps switching, you can definitely sweat quite a little bit. Uh, obviously, I would say that once you can do your gauntlet comfortably, you can start doing the Corrupted Gauntlet, but that is like miles away from what this video is actually for. But um, after that, we can maybe make a little video about how to get into higher level PBMing, and then we can cover other bosses that are definitely going to help you out. Alright, boys and girls, thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. And actually, let me know if you like this video, because as you could have potentially noticed, it was completely unscripted. I thought about this literally the night before, and I was like, you know, this is a video I can pop out uh, quickly after all of the nice and juicy guides I have been, uh, you know, uploading with scripts and everything. You know, I think an unscripted video here and there is uh, not too bad, uh, but you can let me know what you think. Now, we have a Bond giveaway for this video. Please let me know what your favorite intro or uh, mid-level boss is for players to get more confidence in, for you to get started into PVMing in Old School RuneScape. If you include the word a mascot in your comment, you will be entered in a giveaway where I will pick a random user on next Friday stream, and then I will contact you in order for you to get your Bond and you can be like six or seven mil richer. Thank you everyone, especially to my channel members, your support means a whole ton, you have no idea how much it helps. And uh, yeah, my starving family, thank you a lot for it. If you would like to become part of this list of members and absolute legends, click on the join button below and you can see all the cool perks and rewards you can get out of your monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. That is it, in the next one I will have another 1 to 99 guide for you. At this point, I don't know which one it is because it's... I'm just basically going to be switching uh, videos around because I think I like this one a lot and I'm gonna put it um, maybe slightly earlier in the schedule. At this point I'm ranting, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video which is our following 1 to 99 guide. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, peace!